Welcome to another Seed to Harvest episode. This episode you're about to watch is one of the most flavorful episodes I've covered on the channel. And although there is a lot in this episode that makes it different from the rest, there is something that is exactly the same as all the other episodes on this channel. This is strictly an educational documentary backed by science and research. I do not in any way promote the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances. So please be responsible and thank you. The strain we're gonna to review today is something that dropped at Spanibus this past March. If you watched last week's episode, then you'd know that my grow bro Mr. Q was actually at Spanibus hunting down the strains that we wanted to grow this season. Amigo, gracias. All the strains on the list had their own reason for being there, each a unique backstory. But the one we're covering today comes from a breeder I hold dear to my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the Lemon Orange bred by the Greenhouse Seed Company in Amsterdam. As always, we're gonna be following this strain from seed to harvest and showing you everything we did along the way. And as requested by you guys, we have the cannabinoid and terpene lab results from Imperia Labs. Oh, and the post-harvest analysis, giving you a chance to see the effects and how well this strain tests in the lab when growing using a basic two x four setup. Something new in this episode are the nutrients that we're gonna be reviewing. It's our first run with Kronk, and by the end of the episode, you'll know my honest opinion about the nutrients and if they'll be sticking around the garden. Before we roll the episode, it's also worth noting that we took these exact buds you're about to watch grow and competed in one of Colombia's biggest cannabis cups. Copa Farajones. We took a cup home with us, and later in this episode, I'll share the full story in details. And I'm not gonna lie, part of it is really embarrassing. So make sure you stick around to the end. The mushrooms at this event have been on point. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome to Homegrow TV, the internet's highest quality grow show. If you're like us and love seed to harvest videos, subscribe now because we got a ton on the way. Buckle up and get ready because this episode is officially starting. As always, to start off this seed to harvest, let's first talk about the genetics and the breeders who created it. I'm falling free. Out of all the breeders and banks we've featured on this channel, Greenhouse Seeds is one that really doesn't need an intro. I mean, it's the king of cannabis. I'm here with the king in the flesh. This is what we call royalty. The strain hunters. We have all kinds of different areas where different strain grows. So it's very interesting for people to see. The creators of the white widow we're talking about. The white widow, probably the most famous plant in the world. Uh, we have to give some honor to the old breeder in Holland, Ingmar. Uh, together with me, we developed this plant in the early 90s. So I know you've probably heard of the Greenhouse Seed Company before, but there's still some really cool history, stuff that I didn't even know that we're gonna cover here. Ariane, owner and founder of the Greenhouse, is the only breeder in the world credited with winning over 40 High Times Cannabis Cups. This is why he is acclaimed as the King of Cannabis, for his amazing record of cannabis prizes won throughout his career. The Greenhouse! He's always been committed to creating the best genetics in the world, and it's ensure that growers choose the right genetics, based upon their location, logistics, and personal knowledge. And the buds are nearly finishing on this sativa plant. Eh? Who here was watching the grow sessions back when they were coming out? I sure know I was. It was like the internet's first seed to harvest videos and I just couldn't get enough. We're going to show you a plant with a deficiency. You can see some yellow leaves in the bottom. You see, Aryan started collecting genetics and land races from all over the world 25 years ago. And as you've probably seen, the hunt is still on. So this amazing trip was uh, very special, very emotional for us, especially for me because it was the first trip without Franco that I'm doing. You say Franco and Simon here and they're legends for the people, you know, because they've been here working so hard for so long. Decades ago, Ariane realized he had to offer something unique. Most coffee shops in those days were dark, stuffy, and sold only imported hash and tiny Jamaican wheat. 
In 1985, Aryan had started growing exotic strains gifted to him from friends and strain hunted from trips to places like Thailand, Nepal, and other countries in Southeast Asia. The growers supplying the shops at the time were only interested in high yields and short flowering times. Aryan, on the other hand, started experimenting with his favorite hay strains. After many years of trying to convince other coffee shops to sell his marijuana, Aryan later decided to start his own coffee shop, The Greenhouse, which he founded on the Tolstrat in 1992. Tolstrat? Is that how you say it? It's pronounced the Tolstrat, my friend. The Tolstrat. In 1993, one year after opening his first coffee shop in Amsterdam, Arjan introduced the greenhouse in the sixth High Times Cannabis Cup, and he immediately won first prize for the overall Cannabis Cup. The year after that, 1994, Arjan won almost every single cup there was to win at the High Times Cannabis Cup. His achievements didn't go unnoticed, and in 1995, High Times put him on the front cover of their magazine. This led to a great migration of smokers from all over the world to come visit the greenhouse to sample the best cannabis created by Arion. Since opening the first greenhouse coffee shop, Arion has established an empire cannabis business with four cannabis coffee shops, two clubs, the world's most successful cannabis seed bank, an award-winning cannabis film and documentary company, an award-winning nutrient company, a foundation, a medical company, and several other cannabis businesses. Wow. Well, this is the only coffee shop in the world that also creates his own pot, yeah? It's no wonder why he's considered one of the most important figures in the cannabis industry and continues to be a forefront of the fight in cannabis legalization around the world. But here, one, they two, go. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Interestingly enough, Greenhouse Seeds was the first seed bank I ever ordered from in my life. This was back in 2010, after the Superman Hayes just won the best sativa at the High Times Cannabis Cup two years in a row. Another 20 minutes or so to, uh, to Amsterdam itself. So guess what I ordered? Yeah, <laughs> Super Lemon Hayes and some lemon skunk. This right here were some of my first harvests ever as a gardener. So this is why I say that the Greenhouse Seed Company holds a special place in my heart. They were my introduction to my first homegrown fruity strains. My first experience with Super Lemon Haze really was just mind boggling. I'd never seen these type of turps at home and it's the reason that we're testing the lemon orange today. We're also gonna be testing the Super Lemon Haze once again in a future episode to see if it was actually as good as I remember it being. But today we're just gonna be focusing on the lemon orange. This strain is a mix of their all-time champion, Super Lemon Haze, with their own selection of clementine from the Crockett family, which expresses some intense sweet clementine juice aromas without the acidity. Pure sweetness for the palate. They say this strain is 70% sativa and 30% indica, with a nine-week flowering time, and reaches THC levels of 29%, which we're actually gonna be putting to the test later in this episode. According to the Greenhouse Seeds, this lemon orange is the ideal strain for citrus lovers. The combination has resulted in an amazing mix of lemon and orange flavors, accompanied by some delicate earthiness background inherited from the Super Lemon Haze on the inhale. A pure delicacy for the mouth that will range from fresh lemon on the inhale to an orangey earthiness on the exhale. I love how specific they were here. The effects are apparently very balanced between citrusy terpenes that will give you that euphoric feeling and the earthier background that will give you that sweet head buzz that can last a while. The most expressed terpenes are terpeneal, limonene, and karyophyllene, which we're also going to be testing later in the episode. They say the plant itself is beautifully structured and vigorous with some strong secondary branches that will compete for the top. It should produce some very frosty and compact flowers full of aromas, with some fat and sharp calyxes whose very aesthetic flowers glitter in the light. They also note that its strong citrusy smell will get an extra touch of sweetness during those last two weeks of flowering. It was after reading all this online after launch day that I knew I had to have this strain, and it was officially added to the list of strains to hunt at Spanibus. And the crazy part was that because it actually dropped at Spanibus, it was completely sold out. 
like super fast. And just as Mr. Key was about to settle with just picking up a pack of the Super Lemon Haze, this dude right here found four freebie packs with one seed each in them. And he knew that we were dying to try it. And homie came through and tossed the packs in. So if anyone knows this guy, his name, or his Instagram, hit him up for me. Because literally, thanks to him, this episode exists. Much love, brother, and thank you. Anyway, all this is quite the intro and reputation to live up to. Which means we got a lot of work to do. So let's jump into the veg phase. It all started on this sunny, beautiful day of March 22nd, 2022, here at my finca near Medellin, Colombia. I decided to pop just one of my freebie packs of the lemon orange. So as always, bean onto cotton, just three sprays on the inside, three on the outside, and into a labeled Ziploc with just three final sprays. Just 72 hours later, and she already had a nice two inch taproot and was definitely ready to plant. She actually started growing right into the cotton pad. And this is an argument I've actually started seeing in the comments on recent videos. Basically that this was the bad part about sprouting in cotton pads versus paper towel. As you'll see in a sec, she actually has no negative effect and grows just as quick, if not quicker than the rest of the little seedlings on this run. Obviously I'd rather this doesn't happen but it barely happens, and the few times it does, it has not notably affected me once. So yeah, I still stand behind the method of popping in cotton pads, and probably always will. Anyway, after planting, she got sprayed with dechlorinated tap water, and it was time to let nature do her thing. Moving on to just three days later on March 28th, and she had shot right out of the soil and is looking perfectly healthy. Beside her parent strain, the Super Lemon Haze, you can see that they look almost identical in size. Moving on to day 21 since throwing this baby into a cotton pad, week three veg, and it's transplant day. <laughs> I had the plant whisperer over to help me with the day's work. We threw in a mix of cocoa and castings. And for this run, we did a 50-50 split and amended with power mix and mycorrhiza from Mr. Q's Canna Consulting Nutrient Line. Our lemon orange was looking great. She was already a little taller than everything else started on the Spanibus run, and she definitely had one of the thicker root bases compared to the rest. And funny enough, she was the only one that grew into the cotton pad. So there goes that theory. After transplanting, as always, I give her dechlorinated water at pH 6 to 6.3. Actually, up until now, every feeding has been just water because the nutrients we pre-amended with in the soil earlier. Quick check-in just six days later, and the lemon orange was right in the middle of the tent and quickly showing she's gonna be the tallest. Let's jump forward two weeks to day 35 veg, week five, and it was time for her first defoliation. She's a deep green with a slight tip curl on these massive fan leaves. Funny enough, this is exactly what happened in my last episode too. And that was a totally different nutrient company. But the commonality was this was my first time using these nutrients and I will be dialing them in during this grow. That curl, or what is known as the claw, makes me think that there's a bit of nitrogen toxicity or overdose. I'd love to hear your opinion down in the comments below. But other than that, she's looking great. And now that we've identified it, we can adjust. Time to defoliate. For the first defoliation, I usually only focus on my main stem fan leaves and any other big fan leaves blocking bud sites. I do, however, usually leave the top fan leaves on each bud site, mostly just focusing on that bottom half. I could tell she was going to continue to grow tall, so it's also a really good time to do her first and only topping. Usually, I like to either take the entire top off as a clone, or just break the smallest new little growth, which is what I did here. This is also another thing I'd love to hear how you do in the comments below. Moving on to day 49 since sprouting on week seven, and it was time to medicate and defoliate at the same time, <laughs> if you get my drift. Same thing as last time, focusing mostly on the main stem fan leaves and anything hiding the goods. 
You can see she is nice and healthy and that leaf curl is now gone. All I had to do was cut down on the grow from Kronk Nutrients, which now that I mention it, I found out a few days after I was noticing the nitrogen toxicity that I was using the old feeding chart. We burnt it a little bit because we, we, we stressed it out a little bit with PPMs because we're getting close to harvest. But other than that, I mean, it is, I mean, all these are just rock hard buds on the top. Really? I mean, ever since I met the owner, Cortland, I was immediately attracted to the company's mission create the world's cheapest bottled cannabis nutrition. Here at Kronk Nutrients, the reason I started this company was because I wanted to make affordable nutrients without having to sacrifice the quality of the product. He's a young Canadian entrepreneur, and those are two things that I also support. So with all of this, I knew I had to put these to the test and see if we can pull quality from such a cheap cost. People don't realize, man, how much you have to put into a tent. Like Anyway, back to the story. This lemon orange got Kronk nutrients exclusively from seed to harvest. And on this day, I was giving her the week one flower formulation on their feed chart because I knew that we're gonna be kicking into flower just four days from now. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I usually always start giving week one flower feed recommendations in their last week of veg to supercharge their start in flower. Another interesting note is this lemon orange is finally set up in her own 2x4 tent under the 100 and 200 watt Vespa Pro LED lights with the Super Lemon Haze as a roommate. I had the LEDs set to 2 feet away and about 700 to 800 ppfd. Oh, and these were the room conditions from now pretty much until the end. Continuing on to day 12, week 2 flower. And this lemon orange is off to a great start flower. The leaves are all happy and healthy, and that topping we did created a ton of top potential bud sites. Her stretch is definitely tall, and her internodal spacing in the middle section is really far. She's even taller than the famously tall Super Lemon Haze. This isn't good, bad, right or wrong. It's just something to note. I could tell from the way that the bud sites were forming that she had potential to fill up really nice top colas. So I wanted to make sure and do a good defoliation and clean up any lower bud sites that are gonna steal any of that growth from the top bud sites. So here she is before and here she is after defoliation. Quick check-in at just six days later, day 18 flower, week three. And our flowers be popping. shooting pistols in every direction and spreading the first trichome heads into those sugar leaves. Something to note, this week she is the first of the trichome development department out of anything on this run so far. She is praying up to the sky with happiness and I'm happy that she's happy. So let's jump forward to day 34 flower. Week four, almost five. By now, you can tell that just 16 days does a lot to this strain, and she has been working hard on her flower development. She's really fattening up and getting stick it icky. Not only the buds, but the aromas are overwhelmingly strong for this age, at least for what I'm used to. Just curious, but in what week do you start to notice strong terpene development? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it's always been like week four, you start to get the initial scents and aromas, letting me know what she will develop into. But this right here, uh, -uh. she's showing me a strength to her scent that I usually don't get until like week six flower. It's unique, and I'll cover the in-depth analysis here in a bit. For now, let's just say that she's in the world of strong citrus. It's awesome to see the topping we did ended up leading to a numerous amount of even top buds. And even cooler to see how well they're filling out with frost and girth. Wow, she's happy and healthy and must be really loving the nutrition, tent, and conditions we got her set up with. Fast forward to day 50 flower, week 7, and upon opening the tent, you just get smacked in the face of this citrus explosion. I'm just calling to say I, I love, you. love you. You can see the lemon oranges only a foot away from the Bespa Pro 2000, with a PPFD hitting about 1000. This LED was as high as I could get it, and I had to turn it down to about 50% to 75% because of how close it was to the lemon orange. Thank God I topped her. 
because I can imagine if this was just one center cola, it would already be hitting the light by now. That being said, I could have done more HST and LST to keep her lower, but this is my first run and I try to interfere as little as possible, just to see how she grows naturally. Then I adjust on round two, if there is one. I was making sure not to miss a feeding. She was getting about two liters of her scheduled conch nutrient solution every two days. The buds are just swelling and thickening as the days go by on all these top colas. And the trichomes are definitely continuing to spread. The next day, I took her out of the tent to get a better look and whiff. When I took a deep look at the trichomes and seen mostly milky, I knew that it was almost her time, which is extremely surprising because it's only week seven and this strain had a nine week estimated time. So chances are she's only gonna get a few more days and then chop at my convenience. Here we are at day 54 flower. Week seven, almost eight, and it was harvest day. Literally, this is now one of the fastest to harvest strains we have ever ran on the channel. And who knows, maybe it was just this fino, but even Mr. Q was shocked and also agrees that it's time to chop. What's really cool too is the deep purple she started to take on in the last few days. I didn't change anything on my end. No ice in the roots, cold influence, or anything other than good old genetics expressing themselves. Each top cola finished with a perfect lollipop bud structure. Solid, chunky, dense top buds packed with sticky trichomes. Clearly, this Kronk Nutrients line worked wonders and it's safe to say that it definitely performs as promised. I officially approved these nutrients and even got us a 20% discount on all orders if you use the code LEMONORANGE. I think now is a perfect time to cover the aromas. Oh my god, boys. I'm gonna try and explain this as exact and real as I can. It's a fresh fucking orange with a deep kick to the nostrils. It's not any orange though. It really is a sweet concentrated fresh juice. Like an orange peel when you squeeze it with none of the bitterness. I mean, boys, did I just find the Dakota Terp? Is this thing a keeper? That part I'll cover in a second. All I can say for now is they didn't miss a beat on the description and the hype on this Terps. Arion, you dirty dog. How do you do it? I really gotta get an interview with this guy and investigate what's going on with these terps. In a sec, we're gonna do a post-harvest analysis and dive deeper into the aromas, taste, and effect, and also see how well she did at the cannabis cup that she competed at. But before we do, let's admire the sheer beauty on this girl that only has three gallons of soil and was growing under just a couple hundred watts of light in a basic setup. We'll see the weigh in soon, but I can already tell that I'm not too worried what she gives me with terps like this. So did this strain make it into my mother plant room? Is it a keeper? And what is my overall review? I need you to pay really close attention to what I'm about to say. She's a newfound top three, and it's literally the best balance I've ever seen in my life between stupidly delicious citrus terps, harvest time, and actual quality of buds. With the parent genetics being the legendary super lemon haze and clementine, there is no surprise that the cross turned out fire. But honestly, these boys over delivered here, and this strain is completely under talked about in my opinion. With just a handful of people posting their results on Grow Diaries, I can tell there's a lot of greenhouse fans that still haven't tried this strain. So, do I prove it? 10,000%. And did I keep a cut? No, I let my head get to me and I didn't believe the hype. I popped greenhouse before and they're usually really stable. But dude, I really hope that when I pop this, that I get this same pheno or something really similar. I'm stupid for not keeping it. 
but I'm popping it again this year and putting that plant directly into the mother room. She needs to be around for 2023. Later this year, I might post a video ranking my favorite strains that I've grown. If that's something that you'd like to see, let me know down below and I'll make sure to do it. Just worth foreshadowing too that the super lemon haze we grew on this run still had a few weeks left in her and is something I will definitely be showing on the channel here in a future episode. My grow bro Mr. Q didn't pop one on this run, but he did however test the full gas, a tribute to the legend Franco. It was a cross of Exodus cheese and Sherbet OG. All I can say is that the name doesn't lie, she full gas. Now, for the moment we have all been waiting for. The lab results from the best of what they do here in Latin America. Imperia Labs, here in Rio Negro, next to Medellin. The day that I brought my sample to Imperia Labs just so happened to be the day that I was gonna go film the tour for their testing process. So, fun fact, I actually got to watch my lemon orange and a few other strains of mine get tested in person. Get ready, because the numbers don't lie. A total cannabinoid level of 25%, and a total THC of 20%, which isn't bad considering the gear and setup that I used on this run. For such a fast finisher, and such a tasty strain, I'm really happy. I didn't know what to expect, but I'm more than chill with these results. What really shattered my brain though, were the terpenes that were present. I expected mass amounts of lemonine in this strain, but our three dominant terps were caryophyllene, bisabolol, and surprisingly enough, lilanol. Caryophyllene I see all the time, but bisabolol and lilanol I've only seen once or twice. I'm still kind of speechless and just goes to show how much I still need to learn about terpenes. Like how do these three terps right here equal the smell that it does is beyond me. Wow. So before we get to our post-harvest analysis, let's quickly cover the cannabis cup this lemon orange competed in. What's the deal, home bro TV? Watch Boys Colombia, straight up. <laughs> Welcome to one of the biggest cannabis cups in Colombia. This event is absolutely packed with Colombia's dopest brands, activists, projects, and most importantly, growers. This event hands down hosts the continent's stiffest competition flower wise. Like the growers that show up here have been planning this for a minute and they're the cream of the crop. There was moments of the event where it felt like it definitely lacked a bit of organization, but personally I've never competed in a cup with so many good flower entries. So they were doing something right. After three days of getting to chill and blaze with the other growers, I literally felt that there was no way my flowers were going to win a cup. Not because my flower selection or strain, but simply because my cure time was like zero days. I harvested the strain and had one week to fast dry it to get it to 58% and send it directly to the cup organizers two weeks before the event was to start. Because part of it's going to the cup right now, she's just ready. This was sitting at 55 inside. Here's some more and then we got the rest upstairs also slow drying. This was fast, fast dried for the cup. This is going to the cannabis cup guys. So I selected some great buds here. We got 24 grams. So that's the first section that is getting sent off. Usually I dry slow over 14 to 21 days, then jar it and cure it for a month or two before going to a cup. So even though I knew she was a winner, I lost all faith when I seen that all the other growers had a perfect cure on their flowers. And you remember at the beginning of the episode where I said there was something embarrassing? Well, this is where the embarrassing part of the story begins. And before I tell you what happens, I have to say that everything I do and test on this channel is purely for scientific and documentary purposes. So anyway, when I lost faith in my strain on the day of the award ceremony, I decided to test the effects of microdosing mushrooms. The only thing was I didn't know that taking several caps of mushrooms is no longer microdosing and I ended up fully dosing, which is completely fine if you only plan on hiding behind your camera and filming the people that come on the stage after winning. But 
it doesn't work so well if they end up calling your name for third place in the indoor sativa category. <laughs> Bro, my heart sank and honestly felt like the beginning of a bad trip. No shit. No way, bro. Another I don't fully remember the speech word for word because of the mix of pure adrenaline and psilocybin. Bro, all I gotta say is the mushrooms at this event have been on point. Oh my god. And holy shit, this event, bro, amazing. So holy shit, I'm high as fuck. Mushrooms been good as shit. Thank you. Bro, amazing. What an honor. Shit. There was literally like one or two people clapping. I think most people were kind of confused. Honestly, I could have swore I did this whole speech in Spanish, but it looks like the streams were making the calls from here. This is why I strongly recommend never, ever, ever taking mushrooms in a public place where people just might not be on the same adventure as you. And definitely never try it on the day of the award ceremonies at a cannabis cup that you're competing at. Dude, talk about stories for the grandkids. When I woke up the next day, I seen the hand-blown medal that I won the night before, and I couldn't believe that the lemon orange, with no cure and speed dry, actually placed. It just goes to show how well she could have done if I had time to actually slowly dry it and cure her. I guess we'll get to see her next year at some of the cups. Before we move on to post-harvest review, I want to give an honorable mention to the boys that took the rest of the podium in the sativa category. Of course, our boy CV420 from Black Tuna took a cup and got second place in Sativa and third in Indica. And the boys in Spain, Alto Jardín, took both first places in Sativa and Indica. And another honorable mention is Killa Cultiva for taking second place in the Indica category for his purple punch. This guy also really kills it and you gotta check him out on IG when you get a chance. He's completely changing the way growers do things here on the coast of Colombia. Alright, let's finally review the taste and effect during this episode's post-harvest analysis. Am I online? Or am I not online? Listo! And action. What is up, everyone? And welcome to today's post-harvest analysis once again with our special guest, Mr. Q. <laughs> welcome back, brother. Hello, Homegrow TV. Happy to be here, guys. This is what we're going to smoke today. Yes, we have the lemon orange and literally the last of the lemon orange, bro. This is the last Kogojo, the last little top bud and I left the best for last, guys. Wow, she still smells amazing. And I say still because she has been curing for a while, sitting in the jar. Yes. Was a little bit worried, but already when opening this jar, I noticed, wow, this is a real cured flower. Just like those flowers that you get in, in Amsterdam in the coffee shops, don't you think? Yeah, legit. Totally, right? dude. This whole strain in general has been that kind of experience for me. Like Amsterdam in a jar. Take a look at the trichomes too and let me know what you're seeing. But I did a little pre-check before to make sure that they haven't degraded to the point of like, you know, of, of actually dying. So things are fresh. Things are looking good. And now is a perfect time to say this, guys. Just like everything we do in this episode, everything you're about to watch is strictly an educational documentary backed by science backed by science and actual research just like this part right here guys so in no way do we recommend the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances so now that we got that out of the way let's get right to the smoke test we have the dry flower and we also have a little bit of rosin guys a little what? bit of solvent list to test today so it's gonna be double packed oh this is smelling <laughs> really good bro right really good and what did you see on those trichomes when you were checking it out i would say about 20 25 percent of amber definitely seeing some amber in there right. but on the um, on some parts especially on the leaves i still saw a lot of clear trichomes you can just see that every every sack is just covered in resin packed beautiful yes. beautiful well done so we're gonna roll up our doobie and get right to the smoke test of the dry flower Blended doobie. Bro, I'm already getting me the, the aromatics coming from that thing. Yeah, I'm grinding it in a couple times because I noticed the buds are very sticky, mm -hmm. very chunky. And if I 
smash too much too much flowers in the grinder it's not gonna have the good size not gonna it's gonna not gonna smoke that well so i'm just uh taking my time for grinding it to make sure it's all even and the mm -hmm. same size nice there you have it guys an interesting note before we we even dive into the effects on this because i might not remember once we dive into the effects i want to say this right now the whole video you guys have watched was under the influence of lemon orange i actually was non-stop toking the the rosin which we're going to get into here in a second but this rosin bro powered the creativity for the entire video um, oh so you you like to smoke the strain when you're editing yes right? if i can bro if it's still around i want to connect with that strain as i edit the video of course yeah and it's very a very good idea because you also want to tell the people what effect it gives you mm -hmm. so meanwhile you're working on it you can really judge it and you stick with one strain you know yeah. it's not like you start mixing three strains and you know right uh, what planet we're on no you're just sticking with one strain and really feeling it not just for one day but for a couple of days hey, in a row to really know the effect here we are guys i got two doobies almost ready for testing nice dude well guys i feel like once you start it you cannot stop it last time we smoked the whole doobie and it was still sitting here trying to finish the video with the <laughs> don dakota i feel like we, at least we have to try we'll see how far we go okay if it's really too heavy i might not make it nice but i'm gonna try to just fucking go for it just to see the effects and don't forget this is strictly for educational purposes backed by science yes. and by dakota do not try this at home guys please do not and please do not forget that we have to try the rosin after this too so in just in case just in case you do finish the whole doobie and just in case you get a little too ripped and you can't handle this i'll take this part over but i have a feeling bro you're an experienced veteran you're gonna cruise <laughs> and chip away that whole doobie and then we're gonna be enjoying this sucker so don't forget about that hey siri can you pass us two lighters <sighs> thank, thank you, you Siri. appreciate that all right, dude, let's get right to it. Fuck and I was going to say, before we even get to burning, just the dry pull on this sucker. Just holding the joint here, I can already smell mm. the... Actually, it smells a little bit like a uh, tangy. Oh, yeah, lemon orange. Makes mm -hmm. sense. It smells a bit like, like tangy. More on the orange side, right? right? Yes. A little bit more on the orange yes. side, right away from the dry pull. Like a peel, the peel of orange. Without the bitterness, without that gross, like, acidy, but just that smell, huh? Yeah. Nice. Should we do it? Let's do it. Wow, bro. Two month cure over that on this. Mm. So this should be a nice smoke today. Yeah, she lights up easy. Yeah, still good on the humidity. So I've done good there. Burning very nice. Smooth. Oh my God, bro. Dude, I'm not even two puffs into this and I'm already getting the rosin ring. Like the little, the resin ring around the- Oh, going down? Look on mine already, bro. Yeah, when you look at the um, the color of the ash and how the joint burns, you would almost think there's hash in it. You know what I mean? Like some extractions. Right. That, which makes the smoke that comes out more white, more dense, and it's like the hash, you know? The, yeah. the hash slash yeah, burning. resin burning. <laughs> totally, bro. Look at that. Trichomes on fire here, guys. Really impressive how it's smoking, bro. Hmm. A lot of smoke. It's coming out of my mouth. I'm wondering if that also means that the effect is going to be super strong. This flavor already is so good mm. that I might smoke this whole doobie with you. Wow. I'm already starting to feel warm. You know what I mean? Like you start <laughs> feeling yeah. the blood going through your body. Mm -hmm. mm. Little tickle in the soul. So right away, obviously, we're going to work on this until we get to the effects. But right away, talking about flavor, what are your first kind of notes on the flavor here? So actually, the inhale is very different than the exhale. I don't know if you noticed that. Check it again. It yeah. is, bro. I'm going to let you keep going without saying anything that I've already said in this video prior. Oh, okay. And it's interesting yeah, I didn't that know. you say that, I don't bro. know that. I don't, I, didn't, I don't know what happened before in the video, right? <laughs> we... No, but you're completely right. And interesting that you say this is one of the strains that you very quickly note that <coughs> the intake is very different from the outtake. Yeah. And I would say so... The exhale is very dominant on the tangy slash orange flavor, but the inhale is more fresh. I would say, is it lemon? No, I think it's more like mint, more like a minty inhale, and then exhale very tangy. Yeah. I'm missing a little bit the lemon flavor, to be honest. I, yeah. don't, I don't notice that much the lemon. 
but thank you for sure yeah. and gassy interesting gassy. that you say that yeah and i was excited to do this this post-harvest analysis to talk about specifically this part like we have a combination of clementine and super lemon haze right clementine tradition i've never had an actual clementine but it's traditionally supposed to bring us that orange right that mandarin that we're that we're tasting here maybe clementine is a better name for it maybe mm -hmm. you're yeah maybe you're right yeah because i call it orange thinking about tangy now that you say the word clementine is like huh and maybe it does taste more than clementine than orange yeah right. it's such a good description where does it come from bro and that's the pair of names <laughs> from from the crockett family man i might i'm gonna go as far as i can on this doobie with you um till we get to the effects part but back to what we we're talking about like on the parent genetics so we have clementine from the crockett family mm. and then we have super lemon haze and it's so crazy bro this is why i fucking love bringing mr q out for these because dude you literally described it to what uh greenhouse seeds is talking about yeah. so they say you're gonna notice a very different uh, experience on the inhale to the exhale. On the exhale, <laughs> no way, no way. On the exhale, they said you're gonna get that clementine orange, that juiciness, like the juice. And on the inhale, we're supposed to be feeling that super lemon haze on the, like, kind of getting that earthy side from the super lemon haze, earthy, yeah. right? The haze, the little bit on yeah. the inhale, and then the exhale, giving us that orange. I didn't say shit to you. You haven't fucking looked at the episode yet, and you man. nailed it, dude. <laughs> that's nice. awesome, man. Nice. It is like that, and that's what I absolutely love about it. Yeah, actually, as a client, it's so great that when you read a description it's on the website right you said yeah so it's so awesome that you really get something just like they say on the website because with a lot of seed brands they don't really know what's going on they're just guessing a little bit writing a story or someone from marketing just wrote up this and that exactly without really knowing the flower and then as a grower you get the result and it's like well that's not what they said on the website could still be good or whatever but not exactly how it is on the description. And actually, as a client, as a grower, that is what you expect. A good description that when you smoke it, you really feel like, wow, they really, it really came through. Just like when you yeah. go to a restaurant and you order food, you order lasagna, you expect the lasagna, the lasagna is yes. coming. Ugh. That's this right here, guys. And now I'm for sure putting this down. I'm already feeling it in my eyes. I'm not going to get to effects yet, but I'm putting this down. I'm putting this down. I think uh it's so good though i don't want to put it down yet no when a joint is really good i always tell my body just don't let it go out it's just not the same when you let it go out and then you light it up again it's still burning Especially, so nice it is look at that fucking oh, day, no. dude. here as well it's right it's been a second since we've done this actually on a seed to harvest or on a post harvest We've done this on the first few where we would actually put it in our hand, guys. And for those that do not know at home, a good way to do your ash check, actually putting it on your hand, give it a little smear and see how much solid like residue, how black it is or how clean it is. This right here is falling apart and disappearing on my hand, bro. Obviously, on the back end, we're getting a little bit of black in there. But yep. honestly, dude, this is one of the best ashes that I've had on my flowers yeah. in a minute. That's really nice. No, and I'm glad I put that out. I'm definitely feeling the effect. So how long? Are you going to go all the way? Are we going to do a time lapse of you polishing the doobie again, bro? I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> God, Com compared with what we smoked last week, this is a lot heavier. This is more difficult to, to finish until the end. But for you guys, and for, for uh, what is it? <laughs> the sake of science, we're gonna go for it, buddy. We're gonna go for it. There's no saying no. Yeah, just fucking take it in for the sake of science, dude. No, I, no that was a solid little time lapse, guys. And I'm coming, I'm stepping back in. I'm ready to talk about effects as you polish off the last little bit. And before we get to effects, I just want to say the flavor was so good that I'm going to re spark as we talk about effects. Go for it. I've never done this before. Go for it. I've never done it ever. So I definitely feel in the effects. And Oof. it is 
now 11.59 a.m. It's almost noon. So <clears throat> this is basically almost a wake and bake. This is my first hoke of the day. And wow, am I feeling it. <laughs> well, I just did my normal uh, morning routine. I smoked a joint in the morning. <laughs> just <Yeah>. like always. <laughs> just to make sure I feel normal when starting this, this uh, test and not be like, oh, I want to smoke even more. Right. So just standard day, right? Got you. So what are you feeling for effects? Being all the way through the doobie compared to me being a quarter of the way through. Hmm. How are you feeling right now, bro? I can't tell you. The effect is strong. I would say it gives me a really relaxing uh, feeling, like more like an indica, not that much the sativa side, mm -hmm. but also the bud that we were smoking was very chunky. Yeah. So it do does make sense. And actually, when you started filming, uh, filming again, I was already thinking, oof, I'm that high. I'm just going to forget what we were talking about. I need like five minutes. Uh, break but right. we're not gonna do that for sake of science yeah we gotta see what's up here <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i was definitely feeling like oh i need i need some oxygen you know i need to <laughs> i need i need to walk in the garden right some sun in my face and, <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm and then i'm ready for the day right um some sun so heavy face. hitter heavy hitter dakota definitely dude but i will say I feel active too. Like right now, mm -hmm. like you said, you want some sun on your face. I'm totally down to go out for a walk. You know, we got some, some plant work to do after this. We're doing the pheno hunt with the males. Like I'm down to get to work right. after this, yeah. you know? And that yeah. being said, I consume this during the entire edit of this video. It's really good for me. Day smoke, although it is very strong. Probably with the right dosage. <clears throat> this time I didn't like at the beginning when you out the joint if mm -hmm. i still wanted to work that day yeah i would have put out the joint at the same moment more right. or less right but now we didn't so you know for just for doing the <laughs> just for doing the tests right but so but, that's a big difference yes, the dosage exactly right? so look it, at my dude look at yours hold your doobie up look at mine finishing. i'm ready to like get down to work but i'm feeling it you know what i mean and i'm ready to go and chill on the bench and watch him work <laughs> <laughs> you can run the camera today bro are you ready to move to our solventless section whoa no break let's dab it <laughs> do you want to do you want to break no let's do it so guys here we go as i let mr q smell this you haven't tested this before have you no okay so take a whiff it looks a little a look. bit brown to be honest it is why is that so as i explained to you guys the process and how we got to this this was done from the oh chef himself santi from rosin bogota metaseft and what we did this was the dry flour pressed we got an amazing return but the process what's different about this that we haven't done before with our with our flower rosin is this is what is like a mini jar tech or we did a what he calls the jar tech or a technique of basically curing our rosin over the course of 30 days so this was at 30 degrees it started on the press and i left it at 30 degrees kind of bubbling down for two days this used to be, bro, this was like full. And you can see the line, right? Yeah. This used to be full all the way up to here. Let's say half, half the jar. Yeah, and it basically like evaporated. All the bubbles were coming up over the course of those 30 days. And we're left with almost like the sauce. Hmm. So this is like almost like a terpene sauce in a way. Oh my God, I was going to say that it really smells so terpy. Yeah. It's just like terpenes. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And then you say, oh, I, I thought it was going to be the opposite, that this was going to be very concentrated, but without terpene. Let's get down to actually so tasting it. will it make us high? <laughs> well, that's what we're about to <laughs> test and find out. For those of you asking the same thing, will it give us an effect? Well, that's what we're going to test right now, bro. You got the fucking... Oh, bro, we got, we got sisters. Yes, Cheers. dude. Hey, These are actually both Mr. Q's, <laughs> but he donated one here to the studio for, again, the sake of science, so we can test rosins on the channel without having a big torch like we used to fucking have yeah, on the channel. Yeah, that's dangerous, man. <laughs> I mean, look, we just... Well, I did. I just smoked the whole joint. I cannot use a fucking... How would you even call it? A torch? Yeah. Use Nor a should torch you. and a nail and whatever. No, man, somebody's going to get hurt. We're going <laughs> to burn a cable. You just, no, come on. <laughs> so I always rock mine. We're going to give it four clicks to turn it on. Just simple four clicks. No torch. It wasn't four. It was five. All right. So you can see here in front of my face, we got... It's a liquidy <laughs> kind of dab almost. Like it's a mini dab. So you find that a mini dab? Oh. Really? I think so, yeah. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Is this a mini dab? This is what is I'm going to do. Dab? Let's see, let's see what Q does, but this is my dab. Now you're challenging me. Should I do more? It's like half a drop. 
<laughs> I mean, you guys already seen me with the dry flower. It's only half a doobie. And for me, I know my limits, guys. So I'm just like you. I'm going to. Oh, wow. Here. Yeah. Get do that up a little higher so we can see. I like to use the back side of the spoon so I can easily dip it off in the chamber. Oof. Wow, it smells. You can smell it up to here. <laughs> All right, so now we can more easy put it in the chamber and whoop, put it all in there. You're gonna go level one, I'm gonna go level two. I'm on right now, so I'm gonna go ahead. Are you ready? Um, not yet. That's on, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then just one click to go. Through. I think I just put it off. One, oh, two, okay. three, four, five. It's also the, the the full joint that I just smoked. Yeah, bro, me too. <laughs> so now it's on, okay. okay. It's blinking. Doesn't let me change it. Really? And it's full battery. Oh, wait, maybe. Ah, oh, you know what that flash maybe is? Yeah, exactly. It's not attached on the, the automizer. Yeah. Whatever. Since, because of that technical error, it took us about five minutes. Or it felt like five minutes, probably only like a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to load a little bit more into mine because you already had me kind of curious. I've never done this much before. So let's see how this burns. So you're going to do level one. I'm going to do level two. Yeah, I'm going to okay. go for it. Okay, all right, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. All right, guys, here we go. For the sake of science, gonna one click on. Okay, mine's loading up. You already walking? Mine's loading. Okay, I'm on, online. Cool. Mine is loading. Oh my God, I love how long the <coughs> <coughs> Keep going. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> it's still on. more in there fuck that was delicious so mm. as strong as that was <laughs> <laughs> and mine definitely didn't come out as much as yours i don't know what happened on the second tap but the one that i did before oh my god i just well, did like five oh, huge look, this second run hit the, like oh my god Ooh. Right? Oh my god. Oh, wow. Oh, the flavor is uh, incredible. The flavor is so good. So though. dominant. Oh my god. Even that crazy <coughs> meat coffin and hitting that much, it was like I could, <coughs> while coughing, I could just taste orange and orange and orange like every cough. Oh my god. Wow. And effects, dude. Immediate <coughs> double down on what I was feeling in my eyes before. I'm feeling it now like times 10. Oh my god. It's like someone's behind my eyes just like. Bah! Oh. I have to say, thinking about the difference between smoking and dabbing, I definitely got much higher of the smoking than from the dabbing. Uh, I, I got a little technical error here, but right before I just did you know, the dab that we had prepared before, which was exactly the same as yours. Five times, big clouds coming out of my mouth. Yeah. But I felt like I didn't feel that, uh, how do you say that, bouncing feeling in, in your ears, mm -hmm. what you normally feel after having a dab. Right. But the flavor was crazy. Crazy, mm -hmm. crazy. I, I really wonder if you would analyze this terp sauce in the laboratory, how much it would have uh, cannabinoids yes. and how much terpenes. We have to do that. But I think this is just pure terpenes because the Ugh. effect is not that crazy okay. strong for dabbing. In I trust you. In comparison with smoking the joint, wow. Yeah. Smoking the joint was really heavy. Wow. Yeah, I, I trust you on that because you definitely have a, a meter much more than I do. Also, I know is I'm fucking from 1 to 10 on the Richter scale. <laughs> I'm a 420, buddy. <laughs> I'm a 420. 420. <laughs> oh, man. I am blasted, guys. Hilarious. I do not recommend ever, ever trying that at home or that much in a, in a, in a dab. But no, this was strictly for uh, science. Yeah. For science the, sake. For the hundredth time. 
<laughs> uh, anyway, dude. Overall, what a fucking cool experience. Bro. Really good fucking strain. Bro, keep inviting me, man. This is fucking yeah. awesome. Oh, no, it's set. <laughs> it's set. You guys demanded it, so we made it happen again. Q, thank you for showing up, dude. Bro, thank you for inviting me. Homegrown TV, thank you for inviting me. Do you want to... Do you want to throw it down this time? Like, all right, let's roll the episode, and then we'll just keep it going right back into the episode. You say, like, so, all right, guys, uh, oh, we do a... Well, there you have it. That pretty much sums up everything, except for one or two things. The LED we used. Is it worth it? And why did I approve Kronk Nutrients as a recommendation so fast? As far as cheap LEDs for a 2x4, these Best Fit Pros performed really well. As far as build quality, they're built really well, but I'm pretty sure that they discontinued these lights. I'm not sure. So check out Best Fit LED for their newest LED solutions, and I'm pretty sure I got a discount code down in the description section for you. And as far as Kronk Nutrients, the reason after just one complete grow with two plants that I'm ready to recommend it is because of its price. I talk to so many new growers that just don't know where to start. And I've been on the hunt for the best nutrients for new growers for a while. After seeing how the Super Lemon Haze grew and winning a cup with the Lemon Orange, I know these nutrients are ready to recommend for the newest grower online. Cheap, effective, and easy to use. So use the code LEMONORANGE to save a whopping 20% on your order. If you use this code or any of the codes I have in the description, you will be helping support this channel. But that's not why this video exists. It's here to educate and entertain you. And if we've done that in any way over the last little bit, make sure to drop a like, comment, and a subscribe to the channel. That goes a long way. Thanks for sticking to the end. Much love, and see you next week on Homegrow TV.